Welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is a sensitive topic, but really, really important. If you own a home with your spouse, a parent, a sister, a brother, anyone else, don't leave this video. It is very important. The topic is the best way to leave property upon death. This topic comes up all the time, except it's too late. One of the owners of the house already passed and the other owner is now faced with a dilemma. If in fact the deed was not recorded properly, stay tuned. I have a very good friend of mine, David Traster, who agreed to meet with me and spend some time here so we can answer your questions, the questions that you really wanna know. David is an attorney who practices in New York and New Jersey. He does family law, real estate contracts amongst other things welcome david let's say couples who buy a home together they get uh, the deed is recorded in tenancy in joint ten tenancy which is easy because god forbid somebody passes away by default the other person gets full ownership of the property now what happens there's other ways that things are happening so can you sure so you're absolutely correct in New York, in New Jersey, a lot of times on the deeds, and many viewers could take a look at their own deeds to see how it was recorded, it will be, let's say, Jane Doe and John Doe, husband and wife, or married, any variation of those. And that automatically creates a joint tenancy. What is a joint tenancy? A joint tenancy is a tenancy with a right of survivorship. Now, that's a bunch of legalese yeah. for people. But in essence, it means exactly what you said. If John Doe and Jane Doe are on the deed and John Doe dies, Jane Doe doesn't need to do anything. She just signs the deed as the surviving spouse and there's no question of who owns the property and that she's the owner of the property, of the entire property that is being transferred. And this way, nobody has to go anywhere. You don't need probate. You don't need to go to court. You don't need to get letters, testamentary letters or anything else. It could be done very quickly, a regular closing, and in essence, as if John is still alive and is signing his rights to the house as well. The problem becomes if it's, let's say, John Doe and his daughter yes, that own the what property. Happens? That creates what is known as a tenancy in common. Okay. A tenancy in common does not have the same mechanism that we just talked about, where if one party dies, the other is the automatic owner. A tenancy in common says is that each person owns 50%, and that 50% is di then distributed among the that party's heirs or generational line. So while John Doe may, John Doe's side will go to whoever his next of kin are. So it could be that it's his daughter if she's the only one, but it could be maybe John Doe has three or four children. Right. And then each one is entitled to that 50% that John owns because we're leaving the child separate. The child is still right. alive. I don't know what to call the child because we already had a John and a Jane. Well, okay, but here's an interesting question. So let's say there's three children. Right. Okay, let's say I'm the oldest child. I have two brothers and I own a property that way with my dad, for example. My dad passes. So his 50%, you use the question, would I get some of it too as the first child? So his 50% would be split three ways. Will I get the third? You will, but okay. it makes closing more delayed uh -huh. because you don't automatically get this split because the court doesn't know how many children Right. John has. So that John's will has to be probated. And what does that mean? Let's say he died with a will, and I'll talk about dying without a will as well. But let's say he died with a will, and he indicated, I want the house to go to my three children. By the way, New York, New Jersey, you cannot disinherit a spouse. So you cannot say, I want it to go to my children and nothing to my wife. Okay. <laughs> but you could disinherit a child. There is no provision requiring. So children, they should be nice to their they parents. They should be very yes. nice to the parents, especially as they get older, because I get a lot of 
older people who want to change their wills because somebody hasn't been in contact with them for a very long time. It's not nice. But then the will has to be probated. So somebody who's named in the will as the executor goes, files papers with the court. Talk about wills in, in detail on the other show that we're doing. Okay. But as far as the split, how it goes, so it has to be a will, you were saying? It has to be a will. Somebody has to go and get appointed as the executor by the court. Okay. That this person has the power to sell on behalf of the estate, to collect money on the behalf of the estate. So uh, they're issued what are called testamentary letters. And usually in New Jersey it takes a couple of weeks. In New York, probably the same. I would say probably maybe two to three to four weeks you could get these letters done. Okay. And that allows you to sell the house. But that's with a will. Right. What if there is no will? So if there is no will, somebody has to go still. It's a similar process, but the, it's called int intestate, that the person died without a will. Okay. And instead of executor, it's administrator. It's the same thing. That, mm. all, all, the, all the titles, just different names, but the duties it's are just the, to confuse the, the, the people, make yes. them think that you need an attorney <laughs> to do everything and you're incompetent to do it yourself. Yeah. But you could go to the court, you could file administration papers, and you could be appointed administrator, which gives you the same powers as the executor, it's just a different name because the person person died without a will. And then that person signs off on the house, on the sale, with the daughter that we were talking That's about. That's if they're selling the house. If they're selling. But uh, what if they're keeping the house? If they could hold on to it, then you still have to figure out how are you, because the estate has to be distributed. What are you doing? Are you transferring then the home into the siblings' names from the estate? Okay. Or are you have to do some because the estate has to be closed off. You cannot just keep it open and it's not the same as a husband and wife who the husband passes and the wife just stays in the house and continues to live. There's the part that belongs to John in the other scenario where John only owns 50% has to be split up somehow. So either the family would talk, do we sell this? Do we not sell this? Do we, maybe the daughter that owns the 50%, remember she owns the 50% and the one third right, of the other exactly. 50%. Maybe she wants to buy the other part, right. the other two, and we still do the same kind of refinance process that we talked about earlier. So just one clarification, is it anywhere possible in any kind of way, whether it's in New York or New Jersey, to have none spouses, like a, a parent and a child have joint joint tenancy with yeah. the right of survivorship yes it is but it's not automatic it has to be specified in the deed if the deed is silent meaning it doesn't specify so one scenario remember john and jane doe husband and wife it doesn't say joint tenancy but it indicates husband and wife yeah. if it's not a husband and wife then it has to say joint tenancy otherwise it's assumed it's the tenancy in common yeah, so I think it's very important for you guys that when you purchase a home with children and parents or something of that nature, that you make sure that you let your attorney or title company who's handling this closing for you to make sure that is specifically stated in the deed and make sure that you check when you get the deed. Okay. We have we do have these kind of situations where a deed was done maybe 20, 25, 30 years ago, and I just have one right now where we have this and whoever did the deed about 25 years ago made a mistake on the deed. Yeah. Instead of Avenue, they put Road as the address. Yeah. And now we have to correct that deed from 25 years ago that person is no longer alive we have to find whoever handled their estate to backwards. sign a corrected deed and get that recorded yeah. Yeah. before the next one it's very important in real estate to have a chain of title meaning a sent to b b sent to c c sent to d problems arise when that's not followed and there's all of a sudden somebody comes in from the side and says hey my grandma gave me this in a different deed and, yeah. uh, and you guys can't sell it. So anyway, we seem like we are running out of time, but I do want to let you know that our next episode is going to be all detailed about wills and trusts and probate in relation to owning a home or a piece of real estate. And if you have any 
suggestions or interest of a specific topic that you would like me to bring to you, you can email me at keeping it real with a sphere at gmail.com. And David, thank you so much for taking the time and spending the time with me, letting our people hear more information about all of these things. Tune in. See Thank you, you for having me. I appreciate it. Make sure you record the deed accordingly. Make sure that you ask your attorney or a title company to record the deed in such a way where is joint tenancy is going to be written there. If you have any questions at all for myself or David, I will provide you with an email address to send your questions in private. The email address will be in the description on the bottom. If you feel like asking questions on the comments, you're welcome to do so as well. And please like this video, subscribe to the channel. We will be bringing you a lot more good, valuable information you don't want to miss. Make sure to click on that notification bell and I will see you on the next video.